Good morning, everybody, or good afternoon for those of you on the East Coast. Welcome to Introduction to QuickBooks Online for Accountants, Part 2 from Intuit. Um, my name is Alicia Katz Pollock, and I will be your tour guide for today. A little bit about me. My website is royalwise.com, royal like a king and wise like an owl. And I'm a member of the Intuit Trainer Writer Network. And so you're going to hear my voice on a lot of these webinars from qbtraininevents.com. I am a pro advisor at the elite level. I have probably like you know 90 people in my wholesale program and hundreds of clients and what I do um, is I am specifically a QuickBooks trainer and at royalwise.com I have weekly live classes and webinars on QuickBooks and also other business productivity software like Excel and Dropbox and I have a complete video library for QuickBooks online training so if you enjoy our workshop today you are more than welcome to come check me out I even have a mentorship program as well so if you need a trusted guide to hold your hand as you're learning QuickBooks online I am happy to help I also have some books on Amazon.com. I have a, a fundamentals book called Master QuickBooks Online from Setup to Tax Time. And that's a great desk reference either for you or for your clients to keep on your desk next to your computer and look things up as you need to. I also just published a book this past week called QuickBooks Specialty Retail Convenience Stores and Gas Stations. And so if any of you are in some complex retail environments, that may be a help as well. And so you can check those out on Amazon.com. Well, that's enough about me. Let's get started with the workshop. So today, today's program is available for eligible for two hours of CPE credit, and that certificate will be emailed to you within three weeks to the email address that you use to register for the um, for today. And if you aren't finding it, check your junk folder just to make sure that it didn't get filtered into promotions or anything like that. But once you receive it, do make sure that you save it to your computer so that you have it when you need it. One of the ways that you can prepare for all the topics that we're going to talk about today is to join the QuickBooks Pro Advisor program, and it's completely free. I'm going to, we talked about it extensively in Monday's program, and you can get the webinar to that. But if you go to bit.ly.com slash PAP for Pro Advisor program underscore join, or go to QuickBooks.com and click on the accountants menu, you can sign up. I'm actually going to walk you through that a little bit later this morning, but that gives you the portal that we're going to be talking about today and that's the portal that you use to manage all of your QuickBooks Online clients. Um, we are on for two hours today, so a couple of people were, were asking. Some additional resources for you. Intuit is really committed to your training because we want everybody to succeed and grow your practice. And so webinars like this one can be found at qbtraininevents.com. That's where you can find all of our webinars like these, this intro one today, but also our certification webinars and our roadshow. We're back on the road this month traveling around the country. And so hopefully you can come see us live as well. If you go to quickbooks.intuit.com slash blog, we have a QuickBooks training blog. And if you go to firmofthefuture.com, that's the website where Intuit helps you learn how to adopt technology and do things like social media marketing so that you can adapt technology into your practice because that is kind of the way the world is going and we want you to be able to expand your practice using all the tools available to you. So do come to our webinars, do come to our interpersonal trainings and also check out our virtual conferences as well. Our agenda for today is modules five, six and seven. We did cover modules one through four in the uh, workshop on Monday and there are recordings for that and you can also download the slide deck. In your GoToWebinar portal there are two handouts. One is for part one and one is for part two and so if you did miss today, or I'm sorry, if you did miss Monday, head over to the handouts and you can download the slide decks not just for today but for Mondays as well where we covered modules one through four about getting started and how to get around in QuickBooks Online and some of the fundamental transactions for invoices and sales receipts and expenses and checks and credit cards and things like that. What we're going to talk about today is the Banking Center, which is one of my favorite topics. We're going to talk about reporting and also how you can get started making the leap to from desktop to QuickBooks Online and how to bring your clients in. So we'll walk you through what that looks like. 
let's start with a poll so that I know that you are here and we can get you your CPE credit. I'm going to go ahead and launch this poll. And so take a look on your screen. You have a pop-up now that says, how would you uh, refer to yourself in your profession? Are you a CPA? Are you an enrolled agent? Are you a bookkeeper? Are you a consultant? Or do you fall into another category? And let me know who is on the call today because that helps me guide the conversation. So um, I keep these polls open for just a minute or two, and so I want to get everybody to uh, to participate. And so it looks like about half of you are CPAs or tax providers. About 25% of you are bookkeepers. We have roughly 8% EAs and 7% consultants and 18% in that mysterious other category. But I'm glad that you're here for your CPE credit. I'm always really excited when we have CPAs on the call because I know a lot of uh, tax preparers don't get their hands into QuickBooks Online, and so it's a bit of a mystery to them, and it's great that you're here to see what it's all about. Now, it'll kind of explain why all of your clients, not all of your clients, but so many of your clients are saying, well, do you use QuickBooks Online? And hopefully you'll see some exciting things that make you want to adapt it for yourself. So we have almost everybody voted. Let's go ahead and squeak in the rest of your votes. If you can hear my voice right now, take a look on your screen and you should have a pop-up poll so that you can let me know who is on the call. If you, We're gonna have eight polls throughout today. And if you don't answer all of them, but you get the vast majority of them, especially the one at the end, you will get your credit for being here today. So I've got about 97% participation. So let's go ahead. I'm going to close the poll in five, four, three, two, and one. All right, let's go ahead and start giving you the good stuff. So we're going to start by talking about the banking module and using the bank feeds. And the banking module is one of the central hubs of your QuickBooks Online. And so we're going to talk about the benefits of using the feeds. We'll show you the interface with the for review and the reviewed tabs. We'll show you how to match payments and how to categorize your expenses. And the reason why the bank feed is so helpful is that your clients are out and about and they want to succeed, but they're out there doing the work. And data entry is the last thing that they want to do. And as a bookkeeper, it's the last thing that you want to spend your time doing. And so the banking feed automates a lot of, of, of those transactions. And so instead of having a client that's stashing all the receipts in a shoebox and then either them or you having to record them all, the bank feed is a much better way of approaching it. So I'm going to start with a video about it. So stay tuned on your screen. Look, let me get my volume up. Annually entering every single digit and detail to reconcile with your financial Sorry, slight technical difficulty. Financial institution. QuickBooks doesn't Online. Make will help us no, I've got doubles. Wee, that's money. fun. We know that manually entering every single digit and detail to reconcile with your financial institution doesn't make for a pleasant experience. That's why we developed our innovative bank feeds feature. And this is how it works. You'll notice that despite QuickBooks Online talking to all your connected accounts and feeding them directly into the banking center, they won't have been added to your books just yet. That's because you need to check and match up your transactions, making any necessary edits or recategorizing them. Once you're happy with each transaction, you can add them to your books. Now, here's the best bit about bank feeds. Just like a human brain, QuickBooks Online learns faster and becomes smarter the more you use it, enabling it to automatically match your transactions to the same vendor or from the same customer. But don't worry, you'll still be in control over which transactions are added to your books as you'll need to approve them. Think of it as QuickBooks Online doing the heavy lifting for you. With your accounts connected and QuickBooks Online automating data analysis for you, you'll gain access to more accurate reporting that displays what your business is making and spending through up-to-date snapshots and be able to focus on building stronger client relationships and growing your business without having to worry about updating and accessing your financial books. Make the most of QuickBooks Online with bank feeds. Cool. 
Okay. So let's go on. Um, I am seeing a lot of people um, that it said that it was um, uh, listed for one hour. It is, in fact, two hours. What I will do is I will arrange the content a little bit so I give you all the good stuff in the first part of it, and then I can go back later on and do a little bit more detail for um, uh, for that second hour if if those of you can't make it for the whole thing. So let's go back and talk about the bank feeds. So the way the bank feeds work is you connect your bank and credit card accounts to QuickBooks Online using the same bank login, the username and password that you would use if you're going straight to the bank's website. And then the bank data gets downloaded automatically every day into your QuickBooks Online. QuickBooks takes those transactions and everything that cleared the bank and looks to see if there's a posted unreconciled transaction that matches the dollar amount of the downloaded transaction in a similar date range. And so if it finds one, it will say that it wants to match it. And then if it doesn't find a match, it gives you the opportunity to enter it yourself. What's really neat about it is it has smart learning that you, if it sees a transaction that has similar bank detail to something you did in the past, it will automatically recognize it and fill in the payee and suggest a category for you. Keep in mind, though, that those are just suggestions that you are in charge of your bank feed. And if the suggestion was, uh, sometimes they're actually kind of funny, uh, but if you don't like what it suggests, you just change it and you put it in the proper way for you. And it also is available from your mobile device as well. So if you download the free QuickBooks Online mobile app, you can also do your bank feeds like while you're waiting in line somewhere. So that part's pretty cool. So here's how to access it. So you go into banking on the left-hand side, and then you'll see two tabs up at the top, banking and bank rules. There is also now a third tab that just came out in the last couple months called receipt capture. So you'll see a third tab for receipt capture as well. So the first step in the implementation is to connect the bank feeds to all of your bank accounts, checking, savings, all of your credit cards, um, and sometimes you can even do your loans as well. And so the first time you get there, it's going to look like this and prompt you to connect your first account. After that, it'll be up and running every time you click on banking. So what you would do here is you would and to put in your bank name, or if you see one of the icons for the bank, you can just click on that bank icon. Many banks are switching to a new connection service called OAuth, and the bank feeds are also switching to OAuth, which makes your online banking even more reliable. So if you're using some of the major banks like Capital One, Chase, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, Citibank, all of them use OAuth. And the benefit of that is that once you make that first connection with your username and your password, from then on, it's no longer dependent on the password. So if the business owner changes their password, it does not break your bank feed. It's set up permanently. So it's a, a really nice technique. So the next thing that we're going to do is talk about the best practices and what you can expect. So we're going to talk about the best practice workflows for the bank feeds. I'm going to show you how to identify uh, or how to manually add the transactions, and I'm also going to show you how to recognize them by category group. Now, I am going to go into just do a, a surface level first, and if I have time at the end, I will go back and I'll actually demonstrate how to use the bank feed. Uh, for those of you who know me, I could talk for hours about the bank feed. I love the bank feed. I have a full two hour training on my website just about the bank feed, but I can't use up all our time talking about the bank feed. So I'll start by glossing it over. And if we have time at the end, I'll actually start doing some demonstration for it. So when the bank feed is connected, the thing that I want you to understand about it is the artificial intelligence and how QuickBooks looks at the bank feed. So the very first thing it does when you connect to the bank feed is it looks for existing transactions that you already put in. And whenever possible, it will see what cleared the bank and then match it to the transactions that you've already put in. So if you've been making sales receipts, if you have invoice payments and you've been making your deposits, when the bank when they clear the bank it will just come in and it will match 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 them and 
this is what that looks like. You'll see the transactions and you see how there's this green box right there that says match. I always double check. I look at the dates and make sure that if this was the date of the payment, I make sure that it matches the date that it actually cleared the bank in this first column. And as long as the dollar amounts match and the dates match, then I would click on match over on the right hand side. If you click on the transaction, it opens up and shows you more information about it so that you can also match it that way. If it doesn't find a match to something that already exists, the second thing that it does is it looks to see if there's any open invoices or open bills and it suggests, hey, is this a payment for this invoice or a payment for this bill? If it doesn't find those, then it goes to your rules and it looks through all the rules that you've created. And the beautiful thing about the rules is that you can automate them. So if it's a routine expense, let's say it's Comcast Xfinity, you can just say that that's internet. And since it's the same every time and you don't really need a receipt backup for utility bills like that, you can just automatically add it. And so it'll come in from the bank feed and it'll automatically enter itself into the general ledger and you don't have to touch anything. If you don't have a rule for it, the next thing that the AI does is it goes down and says, well, did you categorize this already in the past? And so it will match the bank detail and look up what you did the last time it was for that one. And if it's the same, it will uh, it will suggest the same thing that you did last time. And that's a benefit to try and save you time. However, if you're looking at these and you're like, that's not what this is for, that's not from this customer, or that's not for that payee, that's where you're in charge. It's just trying to help you out by suggesting what you did last time. But if your bank has really um, generic bank details, like it just says check, all the checks are gonna come in suggesting that it's the last check that you wrote. So again, don't panic and look at it and go, oh my God, it's wrong. You just go in and edit it for what it's supposed to be. And then if it's something that's brand new that you've never seen before, it will try and use its artificial intelligence database to make a suggestion for you. So the thing that I really want you to come away with is the first way you wanna use it is by matching it. The second way is by automating it. And the third is that you take control and categorize things yourself, but it saves you so much time on data entry. If you have expenses, or if everybody's got expenses, it will also do the same thing and match those expenses as well. So if you have anything that was put in as a credit card expense or a check or a bill payment, when it clears the bank, it will also give you that same match. So you'll see the green box on those matches. And if there's the same dollar amount and there's more than one potential transaction, instead of being a solid green box, it would be a white box that would say, you know, two matching payments or five matching payments. And then you pick, you click on it and you would pick which one it is. And then you would accept it and match it. So once it has gone through and found all of your potential matches, that's when you have the option to use the bank feed to do your own data entry. And so the, the mechanism just saves you so much time. The bank, if you are coming over from desktop, the bank feeds are far more robust. And so the rules are amazing for what you can actually automate. Now, we're not going to go into the rules in today's workshop because it's more of a surface level um, overview today. But when you take the certification workshops, we'll go into detail about it. Uh, Nadine asks, if you match an item incorrectly, can you find it later and undo the match? And you can, and I will show you where you can do that. Um, and somebody asks, if you have a $200 deposit, will it try and match two $100 invoices? And um, no, it won't automatically do that for you. Your best practice is to make sure that all of your, like if you have $200 payments, put them in undeposited funds and then go up to the plus sign and choose bank deposit and combine them into one $200 transaction. That's the best practice. There is a find match tool that you can use. Let me pull that up on screen so you can see it. Um, but when you click find match, that's this one right here, you can say, oh, this $200 are these $200 transactions. And so it's a nice little shortcut for getting it matched. But I have a love-hate relationship with the find match tool because 
if I'm reconciling, it does mark them as cleared. And if it's a simple reconciliation, that's fine. But if it's a complex reconciliation, you're going to see $200 transactions on the transaction list, but your bank statement is going to say $200. And so whenever I, whenever you can, I do suggest properly making the deposit by going up to the plus sign or the new, the new, new button and making a bank deposit out of those $200 transactions. So I hope that that, that helps. Okay. And uh, somebody asked, does the match work as well when you've already entered it in manually? Yes, that's exactly what it does is it always looks to see the manual work that you've done first before uh, looking anywhere else. Now, there are two tabs when you are, let's actually talk about the interface a little bit. So the first thing is that there's two tabs. There's an all tab and a recognized tab. And when you click on recognized, that filters out the things that it thinks it already knows. And I always like going through and getting rid of all the ones that are easy and already match. And then I can spend my time doing the things that don't match. So when I click on recognize, you're gonna see all the ones that have the green match boxes. You're also going to see all the ones that are using the AI to make suggestions from the past. So I'll go into recognize, do my initial work there, and then once the recognize is done, I'll go back to the all tab and see all the rest of the transactions. One of my hints when you are doing this is that all of the column headers are clickable. You can sort the any of the col any of the transactions by column. So if I'm doing a lot of data entry, maybe that's the first time you've connected the banks and you've got 200 or a thousand of them to do, my actual suggestion is don't do them by date because then you'd have to go through like all 12 months of this bill. Sort them by description, group them together, and then that allows you to know what you make, me, need to make rules out of, and then it'll just suck in all. 12 of the same transaction all at one time. So I'm a big fan of clicking on description and sorting by description. So I tend to go back and forth between description and date. So that's one of my hot tips and suggestions for using the bank feed. You, There's also a batch button. So you can click on the transactions on the left-hand side and accept a number of them all at once. This is also where you find exclude, that if for some reason your bank feed pulls in duplicates, it doesn't happen often, but occasionally it does. If you have duplicates and you know it's already in the system, you can check them off and then exclude them, and then it doesn't mark them as cleared and it doesn't put this extra transaction in the system. Now, there is also a... Another tab, let me find a picture that has it. Actually, I'm just going to go into my QuickBooks for you. Let's go into one of these files. So I'm actually going into a live QuickBooks file for you. And when I am in banking, somebody had asked, well, can you undo this? When you go to this reviewed tab right here, if a transaction was entered incorrectly, you can just click on this undo over here on the right hand side, and that will uh, put it back on, okay, it's a sample file, so I can't make it happen. But if you click undo, it will put it back in the for review tab so that you can uh, handle it properly. So anything that you have done with the bank feed, you can always um, undo as well. Uh, turning and looking at your questions. Okay, uh, somebody did ask if I, through RoyalWise, have more ad advanced classes, and I do. If you go to RoyalWise.com, I have everything from fundamental training all the way through advanced topics. Uh, somebody asked about doing some demonstration on, on the bank feed, and I will do that a little bit later. Uh, somebody says that they've never reconciled in QuickBooks Online. Now, one of the things that's really important about using the bank feed properly is that you it doesn't it, it it does speed up your reconciliations because you've already pre-cleared all the transactions that match from the bank but it does not substitute for doing an actual reconciliation because you might have had transfers that came in twice you might have had a duplicate transaction and sometimes you're missing a transaction so always make sure that you still reconcile Okay. 
somebody asks if bank information has to be connected to QuickBooks Online, and no, you don't have to connect it. But if you don't connect it, then you're making a lot of work for yourself because the, the bank feeds are so robust. And it is the same 128-bit encryption that the banks use. So if you log into a bank to go do your banking, you, there's no reason not to connect them to your QuickBooks Online. It will save you hundreds of hours over over time. Okay, so let me do another poll. Um, towards the end, if I have extra time, I will come back around and answer some more of the questions. So in the meantime, let's do another poll. Let me know what your familiarity is with QuickBooks Online. Are you brand new to QuickBooks Online? Are you only on desktop? Have you poked around but you haven't really dove in yet? Or do you have clients who are already on QuickBooks Online? And you know, some of these kind of overlap. You might fall into more than one category that you work with desktop and you're new to QuickBooks Online. Just pick one, that's okay. While you are taking that poll, let me see what other questions I can answer for you. Um, have I run into question, clients that question security uh, all the time? That's good that people are wondering about the security, but the truth is, is that it's just like logging into the bank. And in fact, once you log in the first time, that password's not stored anywhere where you have access to it. So it's 100% secure. There's no way that I can do anything. It doesn't push transactions to the bank. All it does is just view the transactions that are in there. Uh, somebody asked, can you undo a reconciliation in QuickBooks Online? And you can. Uh, only accountant users can do that. So if you are going into the client's file through your QuickBooks Online for Accountants portal, you can undo reconciliations. Clients themselves cannot. So your clients can't do that. And... Somebody says, can you delete the duplicate downloaded transactions so the first step is in, is excluding it but if you go into exclude you can even delete it further from there okay so we have had most people answer our poll so let's go ahead and i'm actually going to um, actually let me give you a few more seconds to answer the poll so if you hear my voice right now make sure that you answer the poll that is on your screen click which one you want and then click submit and I want to close the poll and get to some more good material. So go ahead and squeak your vote in. Uh, somebody asks, how many clients can you have online? You can have hundreds of clients online. It's just it's an interface. You have your QBOA portal that you can switch between your clients to your heart's content. Uh, somebody asks, is there a site or materials designed to introduce your clients to the benefits of QuickBooks Online? Yes, in your QuickBooks Online for Accountants portal, there are materials that you can hand out to your clients as well. Okay, so I'm going to close the poll in five, four, three, two, and one. And your answers were pretty much spread across. The majority of you already have clients on QuickBooks Online, but uh, there's, we're pretty evenly spread between being new to QuickBooks, being just on desktop and poking around a little bit. All right, let's keep on going. And now what we're gonna do is talk about reporting. And we're gonna start by talking about the chart of accounts and the products and services list. Those are the equivalent of the chart of accounts and the items list in desktop. So we'll take a look at the chart of accounts and how it moves between the chart of accounts and the balance sheet and the chart of accounts and the profit and loss report. And we'll also show you how to add new accounts to the chart of accounts. We'll also then take a look at products and services and how those map to your income accounts and expense accounts. I'll show you how to create a new non-inventory product and a new service. And we'll also take a look at the connection between the products and services and how they affect or how they point to the chart of accounts. So the chart of accounts is found 
by going to accounting in the left hand navigation and then there's two tabs there's the chart of accounts tab and there's also a reconciliation tab i also it's important to note that you can also get to the chart of accounts by going up to the gear in the upper right hand corner and choosing the chart of accounts from there so you can get there in both ways so it, chart of accounts fundamentally is the same as desktop this is where you set up what you want to see on your profit and loss and what you want to see on your balance sheet. When you start your QuickBooks online file, it will come with a number of these already in place. And then you can add the ones that you need. You can delete the ones you don't need. And you can also um, modify the names and customize it for each individual client. And that's something that I like to do because my business owners don't think like bookkeepers do. And so I like to make the categories make sense to the customer. I still know what they mean, but that's completely up to you. So the chart of accounts is the backbone of your QBOA system. And when you're looking at this list, there is a filter up at the top. So if you have hundreds of categories in your chart of accounts, you don't have to go scrolling around and looking for them. You can click on filter by name and find the one that you're looking for. And something that's really cool about QuickBooks Online is that if you're looking for anything on any list, whether it's something in your chart of accounts or it's a customer on the customer list, you don't need to start at the beginning of their name and know what their name is. You can type any letters that are found anywhere in the words. So you can type in just something unique to that client, no matter where it is in the name or anything unique to that chart of accounts. So for example, looking at this list, if I wanted to find my prepaid expenses or any of my prepaid, I can just type pre and it will find anything that has the letters P-R-E in it. Now, once you are looking at the chart of accounts, if you click on view register, it will take you in to actually see on a balance sheet account, it will take you to view the register. If it's a profit and loss, if it's income or expenses, it will take you in to see a report about it. Let's take a look at what different types there are. And this is pretty much exactly like desktop. So this is, you know, shouldn't be new information for most of you, but for some it will be. And so on your balance sheet, you're going to find your assets, your liabilities, and your equity. Your assets are everything that you own in the company. It's your bank accounts, it's your fixed assets, it's any money that's yours. Your liabilities are what you owe. It's any money that you owe on loans or credit cards or um, money that is taxes that are being weighed, waiting to be paid out for payroll, things like that. Then there's also equity accounts. Equity accounts are the ownership valuation. So it's any money that the owners have put into the company or drawn out of the company. Then there are also your profit and loss account types. Your income is all of your revenue from your sales. Your cost of goods are your direct costs of what are sold. And your expenses are all of your overhead costs and your other business costs. The assets show up at the top of the chart of accounts. And uh, I just saw a couple of questions here. Oscar asks if you can put account numbers in the chart of accounts. And yes, you absolutely can. That setting is in the settings so you can turn them on. And somebody asks, can you customize the order of accounts in the chart of accounts? And you can't drag them around like you can in desktop to reorder them, but you can turn on the account numbers and number your accounts accordingly. And that will renumber the order in the chart of accounts. If you don't do that, then they're just going to come in alphabetically by type. So all the bank accounts will be there alphabetically. All of your fixed assets will be there alphabetically. And so you can see here from this picture that anything that you have here will show up in the in the reports themselves. So right now we're looking at the chart of accounts on the left and an actual balance sheet on the right hand side. And so the two accounts that have the type bank are together under bank accounts. And then your accounts receivable, and you can have multiple accounts receivable, accounts if needed. I don't generally recommend it, but some people need it. 
And then if any of your current assets will be grouped together under other current assets. And notice that I have more other current assets on my chart of accounts. There's four of them here, but there's only two of them showing up in the report. If there's no activity in it, if there's zeros, notice that prepaid expenses has no balance. So it's not actually showing up on my balance sheet, but that's a setting in the reports. You can still have it show up and show zeros if you wanted to. In the same way, your liabilities react exactly the same way. All of your credit cards are going to be grouped together under your credit cards. And if again, if there's no balance, like this visa has no balance on it, so it's not showing up on the report. Again, that's a choice. But then all of your current assets, I'm sorry, current liabilities will get grouped together, your AP will get grouped together, your loans will get grouped together, and your equity gets grouped together. And then that way you have subtotals for each of the types in that second column. As we continue down the chart of accounts, the next category are your income categories, and those will also get grouped on your profit and loss report. And now this demo here, this comes out of Craig's Landscaping, which is the sample file that you can play with to get to know QuickBooks Online. And I'm not actually a fan of these income categories. I think there's too much detail. This is not what I want to see on a profit and loss report. If I have landscaping services and then there's a subcategory for job materials and then subcategories for decks and patios and fountains and plants and soil and sprinklers, those subcategories for from decks through sprinklers, I personally don't want to see them on a profit and loss account. What I would do is I would make them products and services and have all of the products and services income from them dump into job materials. Then I still get the total paid, but I don't want to have hundreds of categories on my income statement. So make use of your products and services and, and have a tight number of income categories on your chart of accounts and your profit and loss and have as many products and services as you want in your products and services list, then that way you can run really detailed reports on what it is that you're selling. So that would be my approach instead of what you actually see on this screen. Continuing down the line, the next one up is cost of goods. And this sample here only has one cost of goods category. And for a simple company, that's just fine. But for a more complex company, you might want to have cost of goods for supplies and materials, cost of goods for labor like subcontractors, cost of goods for shipping, cost of goods for um, equipment rentals. You can, um, there's all different um, there's five different ones that you can have. Now, somebody had asked for the link to the uh, demo content. And so I'm going to put that in the chat as well. So qbo.intuit.com slash reader, like redirect slash test drive. And so this is a sample company file that you can uh, try things out in. And that way you can test things out without going into a real file and breaking it. So now that we've seen how the, oh, I didn't mention expenses. So then after cost of goods are all of your expense categories. And again, you can have these be general categories or you can break them out into subcategories if you would like to. And so these are all your overhead categories for the, in, the costs that you would incur even if you didn't sell a single thing. These are the costs of keeping your doors open. When you want to add a new account to the chart of accounts, you'll go up to the new button in the upper right hand corner. And then you'll choose the account type. And so the account type are all those different ones that I just listed out. Now there's another field here called detail type and you see how it has an asterisk on it. That detail type allows you to really understand what these things are for. And hypothetically, they map to tax software, except that, oh, their detail type's kind of like your appendix, that you know it's there, but nobody knows exactly what it does. So I still like using the detail types to give me information about the purpose of each of my categories, but the truth is, is that they don't really do anything. <laughs> so you just kind of have to work with them. 
but you'll pick your account type like expenses and then your detail type for what kind of expense it is and then in the name field you can it will adopt whatever detail type you chose but you know if i had chosen expenses and then insurance in the name field on the right it would have defaulted to insurance but now i erase it and i type in workers comp so you can make the names anything that you want them to be there's a field for description and that's also just a place for you to type in instructions for yourself for your team or for your client but they don't actually show up anywhere it's just an fyi if you would like to make sub accounts you can make sub accounts seven levels deep and with that seven levels deep you can nest as much detail as you want but you want to kind of strike the fine line between how many sub accounts you have because while they're going to give you extensive reporting they're going to make it just that much more cumbersome to manage uh, some people some uh, d asks if a client has set this up and they've used the incorrect type you can absolutely uh, change these the drop down on the far right of the chart of accounts where it says view register right here that little drop down arrow gives you the option to edit and also to inactivate them if you choose inactivate it doesn't actually delete them or even if it says delete it doesn't really delete them they're just inactive and if you had any transactions in them they'll still show up on the reports they're just not going to show up on your active use list and this is also where you would go and drop it down and choose edit and then you can edit the edit it and change give it a different detail type change the name anything that you want to do okay and somebody has also asked when you would want to use a sub account so an example of that might be automobiles or um or utilities so if you would just want to put everything under utilities great but if you want to separate out what your internet was from your electricity from gas to um to garbage then you can make sub accounts and separate them out if you are going to use sub accounts make sure that you never post to the main account so if i have utilities broken out into water and electricity and internet then never post just to utilities make sure there's at least an, an option for every contingency or make an other category so that you have a place to put it okay all right and then i had mentioned the difference between using your products and services versus using your chart of accounts and the i think keeping your chart of accounts really tight is to your benefit but what you can do is make as many different products and services that all dump into the same income account so the products and services list is the equivalent of your items list in desktop and there's four kinds of products and services in QBO. There's non-inventory for tangible goods. There's service for things that you do. There's bundles which collect multiples. So like, let's say I'm going to install a fountain and I need a fountain and a pump and two hours of labor. I can make a bundle called fountain installation and it will automatically burst out into all of them so that I can just put one thing on a sales receipt and it affects three different categories all at once. And then the fourth type are inventory. If you're using plus and if you turn inventory on, then it has inventory management and that's the fourth product type. Now in the right hand picture, you see what it looks like when you're setting up a product. You give it a name, you can give it a SKU number if you want to. You can even put in a picture of it. So if you're synchronizing to um, into its POS system, they show up. A couple of the POS, POS systems will show the pictures somewhat. You can make categories and then you'll put in the sales information for what you want to show on the sales receipt or the invoice when you add it you can put in a default price if it's always the same price or frequently that price you can put that price in but with the, both the description and the price it's customizable every time so you can have the most frequently used price but then you can just erase it and put in a different price or you can put in a generic description and customize it on every single transaction no problem but the important part is where you see the red arrow here for the income account and 
that's where you can put in which income account it's going to dump into. So if we think about that first initial one that I showed you where it had landscaping and then job materials, I can make separate non-inventory items for every single job material that I might purchase or that I wanna track how many of them I'm selling and then have them all go to the income account of job materials. And that way they'll all accumulate in that bucket. So that's a great way of, uh, of getting it set up. Now, Karen asks, if a client already has an extensive item list, how will it import? It'll import perfectly. If you're coming in from desktop, it basically just takes all your desktop data and puts it into QuickBooks Online. So that part's easy. And we'll talk about a little bit about that later on. And we'll talk about it extensively in the certification class, how to actually do your imports. So let's go ahead and do another poll. Let me know how my pace is. Am I going too slow? Am I going too fast? Am I just right? So I call this my Goldilocks poll so that I know how I'm doing. So go ahead and let me know. So right now your poll should be showing up on your screen. Let me know how I'm doing. While you are voting, I will see about answering some more questions for you. I've got a little bit of a delay on my side. Okay, it looks like for the most part, I'm doing just right on my paste. For those of you who I am going too fast for, uh, you do have the slide deck in the handouts for this webinar, and you're more than welcome to go in and download them so that you can read through them. Also, you will be getting a recording of today as well, so you can go back and re-watch it. So if I am going too fast, you will definitely be able to pick up all of the information. For those of you who I'm going too slow, I assume you are those people who said that you already have clients in QuickBooks Online, and do keep in mind that this is a, an overview webinar that we have more advanced webinars, especially your next step would be your core certification. So if everybody can go ahead and take that poll, let me go ahead and answer some more questions while I'm waiting for you to take your poll. Uh, somebody says they noticed that the lower cost QBO subscriptions don't include inventory, but uh, that's just in the plus version. Simple Start and Essentials still have non-inventory items and services. So on all of them, you'll see non-inventory and services and bundles. And then it's just the plus when it's turned on that you see inventory items. Okay, somebody asks that uh, you cannot edit an account when there's a current balance or amount in the account, correct? And that's actually not correct. You can edit an account anytime. If you change the name, it just changes the name on the reports. If you change the detail type, it just moves it. Like you can actually move something from expenses to cost of goods and all the transactions will go along with it. And then um, Annalisa asks, how would you separate income for a law firm, both by partner and type of case? In that case, what I would do is you would probably use classes for that or maybe locations, and that's available in the plus version. And we don't talk about classes in today's webinar, but we do talk about it in course certification. So it looks like most of you have voted in the poll. So go ahead and squeak your vote in if you haven't already checked out the poll, there is a pop-up on your screen. And um, I will close the poll in five, four, three, two, and one. And okay, a couple last questions before I continue. Uh, somebody asked, is there a chart of accounts for service business that you can use for new clients? Where do you find it? Actually, the built-in chart of accounts will give you most of what you need for your new clients. Uh, you can also um, create your own chart of accounts for your own company that you can upload into QuickBooks Online. So that's another option for you as well. Somebody also asks, if you void an estimate and the customer later accepts it, can you unvoid it? Uh, yeah, you can. Um, all you actually do to unvoid it is just put the dollar amounts back in. What voiding does is it just zeros everything out, but it leaves the structure there. Okay, 
let's keep on trucking. So now that you have seen how the chart of accounts is structured and how it plays out with your chart, with your profit and loss report and your balance sheet and how to integrate that with your products and services, let's go in and take a look at some of the basic reports in the reports center. So I'm going to show you how to navigate in the reports center, run basic AR and AP reports, recognize the difference between cash basis and accrual basis reporting, understand that reports what you see in your reports, well, how you see and why you see different reports at different times. So let's start with the report center. The report center can be found from the left-hand side. You click on reports on the left-hand side, and then there's three tabs, standard reports, custom reports, and management reports. Your standard reports are all the built-in reports that come with your QuickBooks online subscription. Your custom reports are the reports that you have manipulated. Maybe you've set them for a time range. Maybe you've filtered them by a customer or a product. Uh, anytime you customize a report and save it, you're going to find those under customized reports, and you can have them be internal or you can share them with your clients so that they can run them as well. And then there's also management reports, which we talk about in the the certification training and management reports are these absolutely beautiful pre-formatted reports with cover pages and table of contents and you specify what reports you want and you can write messages and notes and they even auto schedule so you can have it put together this beautiful report for your customers and have it send out on the 20th of the month every single month and you it looks to your client like you just spent hours crafting this report for them and in fact you didn't do anything it just got built out of your structure. So definitely take a look at those management reports. They're gorgeous. Okay, now when you are using the reports center, you can click on the star to the right of any of the reports and that makes them rise up to the favorites up at the top. So if you have commonly used, frequently used reports, you can have them just go up to your favorites just by clicking on the star next to them. If you are searching around for your reports and you can't find what you're looking for, if you click on find reports by name and you just start typing, it will find all of the reports that have that in the name and then you can run it right from there. Excuse me. As an even slicker way of doing it, if you go up to the magnifying glass in the upper right hand corner, that's the find or the search, you can search for a report name there and just run the report no matter where you are in the system. So if you want to run a PL or a balance sheet, you don't even have to go to the report center. You can just click on the magnifying glass and type profit and it will pull up a profit and loss report and run it right on the spot. Okay, when you run your reports, you have the option of running any report at any time in cash-based versus accrual-based. And what's kind of neat about that is it's separate from how you're filing your taxes. You set in the account and settings whether the company is running cash-based or accrual-based and it's reporting to the IRS. But regardless of that selection, you can run any report by cash basis or accrual basis. And so a cash basis report is only going to show the income on the report after the customer has paid the invoice. And it's only going to display the expenses after the date the vendor has been paid. Whereas with accrual basis reports, if you write an invoice, it shows up as income as of the date of the invoice, regardless of whether the customer's paid or not. And the same with expenses. If you're using bills and AP, then those bills will show up as already paid expenses on an, a report that's accrual basis, even if you haven't actually paid it yet. And when I am working with a client, I will show them both because you get different information whether you run a report cash basis or accrual basis. And so I encourage my clients to run it both ways and it doesn't affect your tax reporting uh, whatsoever. Okay. Now you may find that you don't see all the reports that you want to see. And there's a couple reasons why. The first one is that the reports are only available based on your QuickBooks online subscription. So in simple start, there's only maybe 20 reports, but in plus there's over 100 reports. Or if you are not running payroll, you're not going to see the payroll reports. Or if you are running inventory, you will see additional inventory reports. 
So once features are turned on and off, it will affect whether the report shows in the report center as well. You may also be affected by user permissions. Somebody who's the master administrator or the company administrator are gonna be able to see all of the reports. But if you have a standard user who can only see customer facing transactions, then the only reports that they're even gonna be able to access are those AR reports. So if one user is seeing a report and another user is not seeing a report, check their permissions. You might have to expand their permissions to give them access to the report that you need them to have. Okay, I am going to go into QuickBooks Online and demonstrate some of these reports. So I'm gonna go into the report center here on the left-hand side. And so, as I said, here are all of the standard reports and they're broken up into groups. You can also collapse these if there's ones that you don't use very often, you can, like if you don't use the sales tax module, you can collapse it. When you go to custom reports, you'll see all of the custom reports that have been made by different people. And then under management reports, these are the, these absolutely beautiful reports that I was talking about. Let me go ahead and just show you one real quick. So I'm going to click on view. And this is what it looks like. Now you don't get to change the color scheme. It's not quite that advanced, but you can choose whether or not you have a logo and what text, who it's going to say it's prepared by. You select which reports you want it to show. And then it has all of the reports underneath and they look absolutely beautiful. And there, you also have the option of additional uh, notes pages. I don't know if this, I just picked on one at random and it doesn't have one, but you can have notes pages as well. And then you can set it to automatically send on a schedule. So as long as that date is after you know that you have reconciled their accounts and the data is right, then you can automatically send them. And so when I run any one report, so let's say I run a profit and loss report. Now this is a fake file, so um, we may not get good data out of it. It defaulted to last month, but I want it to show this whole year. So I will tell it this, maybe I'll do this year to date. You can display different columns, so you can break them up by classes, you can break them up by customers and products and services, which essentially give you a profit and loss by product or a profit and loss by customer, it's pretty slick. And then here's where you can pick whether you want to see it by cash or accrual, and then I'll run the report, and that gives you that report right there. Now, it did default to last month. I'm going to give you another little Easter egg here. This is one of Alicia's hot tips. If you go up to the briefcase up on the left, which just for some reason disappeared. Let's refresh my screen and bring it up again. Okay, briefcase. If you go down to report tools, check this out. Under report tools, you have the ability to set the defaults for your reports. So QuickBooks Online out of the box defaults to last month, but if I want it always to default to year to date, I can do that. And then I can also have it default to accrual base, which will include my AR and AP regardless even if I'm reporting taxes cash-based, maybe I want to see my reports accrual-based. So now when I go back to my reports and I run that profit and loss report again, now you can see that it defaulted to year-to-date accrual. So cool little trick for you right there. And uh, somebody says, can you run, can you compare previous years? You do have the ability to do previous year comparisons. Um, there's no balance sheet and PL side by side, but you can run them both and then just resize your windows. Okay, let's go in and take another poll. And this is actually a little quiz for you this time. This one does have a right answer. Let me know what type of report shows the income at the time it was received and expenses at the time they were paid. So is it cash-based or accrual-based? So again, we're not grading you, you get your CPE credit whether or not you got this right, 
but go ahead and let us know which basis does that. While you are taking the time to think about that, let me go in and look at your questions as well. Um, oh, you're welcome for that report tip, uh, Manyi. And let's see what other questions can I answer here. Okay, uh, somebody asks about ports, reports based on class that you require monthly. Uh, you can use classes as filters and as columns. Uh, it doesn't work exactly the same as desktop, but give it a try. For the most part, it might just be get used to looking at it a little bit differently, but I haven't had any of my clients complain or not be able to get the information that they need. And in fact, QuickBooks Online has even more than just classes. It also has another distinction called locations. Locations can be, it works just like classes, but it's only one per transaction, not by line item. But it allows you, if you have multiple locations, you can see what's happening in one store versus another store. You can use it to split it up by departments, by businesses, by properties. So you actually get two dimensions of reporting in online that you don't get in desktop. Uh, somebody says, can you run a report on a keyword in any field? Um, Jennifer, for the most part, yes, not always, but you can frequently filter your reports by description and then type in some text that you want from either the description or the memo. Uh, Rick asks, can you rename the reports? Yes, you can just um, click on the report and type in whatever name you want it to be. And let's see. Um, Angie says, when you click on the briefcase under my client, it disappears. And that just happened to me, but that was the first time I had ever seen that happen. So there must be just something happening in the interface. If you just refresh your browser, then you should be able to get it back. Okay, so most people have voted. If you have not yet taken the poll, please, this is the time to take it so that I can give you more excellent information. We are about halfway through our time today. I do understand that a lot of people had planned on this just being one hour. Uh, so if you can stick around, that would be excellent. If you can't stick around, the information will be available by webinar. You will get that um, that information so that you can, oh, what am I trying to say? <laughs> Watch it or finish it later on. Okay, so if you have not already voted, this is the time I am going to close the poll. I'm gonna close it in five, four, three, two, and one. The correct answer is cash basis. That um, if the report, uh, it shows the income at the time it was received. So not the time you provided the service, but the time you got the money. So that's cash basis. And expenses at the time they were paid, not at the time you entered the bill in the system. So for that reason, those two answers are both cash based. Um, somebody, uh, people, a couple people are asking for those of you who had to leave, who you're planning for one hour, you are still eligible for partial CPE. So if you do have to leave after this first hour, you will get one CPE credit instead of two. Okay, so let's go on to module seven. And this is where we start talking about how to bring your clients into QuickBooks Online. Now, how many of you out there have seen some cool things in the last couple of days or by playing with it that you're like, hmm, okay, I see why QBO is gaining popularity and I can see why my clients are interested in it. So what we're gonna talk about now is how you can serve your clients best by choosing what the right subscription level is. And then we're gonna talk about how you can sign them up. So the first thing that we have to do is focus on our clients' needs and identify what those needs are so that we can best serve them. So we're gonna start by talking about the different subscription levels that are available for QuickBooks Online and for QuickBooks Self-Employed. And the first step that you need to do is understand who QuickBooks Online is great for. You do have to have a solid understanding of the features and the workflows before you can determine whether or not the client's a good fit. And so the first thing that you wanna think about is, is this a client who's receptive to change? Are they already looking to move their processes to the cloud? And so QBO is a particularly good fit for clients who are out on the go and they're doing 
a lot of their business on their mobile devices while they're visiting customers. They're already used to communicating by text or by Slack or sometimes even Facebook Messenger, but they're used to going online to getting their answers. While any business can be a good fit for QuickBooks Online, it's easiest to start with your service-based businesses or some of your retail businesses first. Professional services like architects, consultants, uh, somebody who needs to keep track of time and then bills for time and materials, all of those are great fits for QuickBooks Online. So if you have clients in the trades like electricians, landscapers, painting companies, they all have the ability to bill for time and materials, so that's not a barrier. There is progress invoicing, so that's not a barrier. Other clients who are good fits are uh, rental properties, who need to keep track of multiple units or locations. You can do that through classes and locations. Retail clients that are a great fit, hair salons, clients who sell on eBay or Etsy or have web stores. Um, in those cases, you'll do e-commerce integrations, which can get pretty complex, but it's no different from doing it in desktop. It's just, you know, the features are in a different place. So if they are using cloud-based applications like email, Slack, CRMs or industry specific apps, a lot of those integrate right into QuickBooks Online. And so they can share the information in one place and it goes back and forth between their CRM and QuickBooks, for example. If they're already using online banking and they're used to paying their bills online, QuickBooks Online is going to be good for, for them as well. Especially if they have a, a employees in multiple locations and they have to collaborate, they need people in their QuickBooks from multiple places, that's a great fit for QuickBooks Online because anybody can log in from any browser anywhere in the world, and you don't have to maintain a VPN or host it with right networks. It saves you a ton of time and money because there's no infrastructure, it's just a login. And if you're finding that you're spending a lot of time performing basic bookkeeping tasks, that's another time to go to QuickBooks Online, that there's so many automations built in that desktop doesn't have, that the time that you spend doing data entry and managing transactions plummets. And that allows you to maybe take on more clients or change the way that you work. And if you're on fixed pricing, then you don't have to tell your client that you're saving all this time. You can just keep billing them at the regular rate and just spend less time doing it. So that'll allow you to grow your business as well. The things that you want to think about when you are choosing QuickBooks Online for a client is, you know, who is it great for? Does QuickBooks Online solve some of the bottlenecks? Are you waiting on client files all the time? I don't know if you knew this, but there's actually a shared documents area. And so you can go into QBOA's work area and make a document request. And the client can go down to on the left navigation down to my accountant and upload documents for you. So you can share documents right inside QBO. If they have high volume and a lot of data entry using QuickBooks's bank rules, shows QuickBooks how to categorize the transactions, and the bank rules in QBO are way more robust than they are in desktop. It's, you can do amazing things with them. In desktop, all you get to do is put a name in a category. Here, you can do classes, you can do splits, you can create complex criteria, like if it's Intuit and it's less than $20, then it's merchant services, and if it's Intuit and it's more than $50, then it's my subscription. And it, it it's amazing how much work you don't have to do anymore. Uh, and again, you have real-time multi-user experience that anybody anywhere can log in. And if you have a client who is always losing their receipts or you're waiting for the documentation all the time, there's a brand new feature in the mobile app called Receipt Capture, and they can download the app, which is free, they log in with their same login that they use for QuickBooks Online, and they can take a picture of the receipt and that shows up in the bank feed and matches the transactions coming into the bank feed. So you can attach receipts, super easy. And so there's a, a lot of great, um, uh, great features for that. Okay, um, turning and looking back at some of the questions. Hang on a second, I've got somebody who said I would answer but oh, um, for Adam, you can't customize the management re 
reports to fit the color scheme at this time, but please put in feedback. That would be amazing to do that. Once you chose a color for your invoices, by the it would automatically flow down to your reports. I would love to see that. Um, somebody asks, can you attach a monthly bank statement or credit card statement to your QuickBooks? Not at this time, although you can use the QBOA portal to up, have your clients upload them to you, but that is a feature that's coming. Right now it's in beta and very shortly you are gonna be able to just see the bank statements right inside your QuickBooks online. Uh, somebody else asked if all of this is encrypted and as safe as online banking, all of it is 128 bit encrypted. So it's completely safe. Okay. And okay, let's go ahead and keep going. So still continuing to identify our clients needs to make sure that we're making good recommendations. You definitely need to do a needs assessment with your client and find out what their needs are. And this is a great opportunity also to streamline their workflow and help solve some of their bottlenecks as well. So when you are meeting with your client, I highly recommend meet with everybody who's going to be using QuickBooks. Don't just rely on what the business owner says, because as we know, there's a big difference between what the business owner thinks about what's going on and what the front desk person thinks about or the person who's doing the daily transactions. So interview everybody who's going to have their hands in. And one of the things that I do is I take all of their needs and figure out how QuickBooks Online is going to best address them. And then when I train them, I train them to incorporate the information that everybody's going to need and where they're going to need it. And they don't even know that it's like how, they, they think it's just how you use the software. So it's one of the ways that I train people on the job is to include everybody's needs in the fundamental training so that everybody gets the information that they have to have. I also recommend using that test drive company. We did put that in the chat. Um, so if you look in the chat, you can find the test drive URL and try things out in the test drive company and try out the workflows before you recommend them and so that you know whether it's really gonna work for you, for them. And then also compare the different subscription levels to find the best fit. And I'm gonna show you what those are in a few minutes. When you are doing your needs assessment, you definitely have to know the differences between each subscription level and you also have to know the specifics of the features so that you can also evaluate the need for third-party products and add-ons. So QuickBooks Online is not meant to be the be-all and end-all software solution, that it has the core features that you need, but then there's a whole universe of third-party apps out there. And so you get you need to decide whether a particular client need is addressed inside the software or whether you're going to have to turn to one of these third-party subscriptions. Now, don't be shy about that. Don't say, oh, well, I don't want to use a third-party subscription. It's amazing what they bring to the table. We talked about that a little bit on Monday. So there's, uh, we talk about the apps in the part one slide deck that you can download for today if you weren't here on Monday. And when we take the certification training, we talk a lot about that. So when you're doing this needs assessment, for example, you might at a glance think that you need QBO Plus because it has inventory, but later on you realize that your client needs LIFO inventory, last in, first out, but QuickBooks Online has FIFO. Or, um, and so you might need a third, no, no or yet, hang on, hold that or. Um, so you might find you want a third party solution and then use that to import the data into QuickBooks Online. And so if you have, if you're going to use a third party app, maybe you don't need the feature. Like you can do QuickBooks Online Essentials at a lower price because inventory is going to be handled by the third party app. So here are some of the needs assessments. If they're doing retail or e-commerce, or they have automatic invoices that you're going to import, a lot of the time you don't need plus, you can go with essentials because that heavy lifting is going to be taken up by the third party. Do they need progress invoicing? That's available from essentials forward. Do they need price levels? That's available, I think it's in plus forward, but it might be on all levels. Then think about their purchasing. Are they using accounts payable? If they're not paying bills, 
if they're just cracking open the envelope and entering the expense, that's not bill paying. I mean, we call it paying the bills, but they're not really bills. They're just expenses. So if they're just putting in their expenses at the time they pay them, then they don't need accounts payable. They might be able to use Simple Start. But if they need job costing, that puts them in plus. Do they have a bill approval process where maybe you're the bookkeeper and you have to send it up the chain to get approvals, maybe even multi-level approvals? Then you go with bill.com, a third-party app. So what you need, learning about the third-party apps is really going to help you out a lot. And same thing with inventory. If their needs are beyond the basic inventory tools that are in there, take a look at some of the the ones like SOS Inventory or Deer Inventory or Locate. There's a lot of different options out there and they all have different strengths that they bring to the table. When you're doing your needs assessment, also take a look at payroll. Payroll needs vary by state and by industry. QuickBooks Online Payroll is built into QuickBooks Online at either the essentials level where it's do-it-yourself payroll or full service payroll excuse me, both of them allow you to use the time cards that are built into QuickBooks Online to enter in the data. And you can have as many time card only users as you want. So you can have all of the employees log in, fill in their time cards, and it flows right into QuickBooks Online's payroll. But some states and localities have complex reporting requirements, which might not be a good fit for QuickBooks Online. Um, multi-state payroll, you can do multi-state payroll, but sometimes you have like prevailing wage or per DMs, and that can be difficult to track, track internally. And that's when you might want to turn to third-party payroll and then just import the transactions. When you look at reporting, reporting needs are very important. So while QuickBooks Online has over 100 reports that can be customized to suit your client's needs, sometimes clients can benefit from industry-specific reporting or KPIs, key point indicators, uh, or enhanced web and mobile dashboards, things that you might get from Fathom or some of the other reporting apps that are out there. And so, you know, again, taking a look at third-party apps, it's not a matter of dismissing QBO because it doesn't do that. It's a matter of finding the perfect fit. And basically what you do is you create a custom solution for each one of your clients. With sales tax, QuickBooks Online can handle multiple state sales tax, but your client might have more sophisticated needs or they might have to track use tax or they have tax planning or they may have other requirements. And so maybe the built-in sales tax is going to work just fine for you or maybe you need something like uh, TaxJar or Avalara. And all of these apps are available at apps.com. Or when you're in your ProAdvisor portal, in the bar on the left-hand side has a link to apps. And so there you can do as much research as you need to do. And because you're a pro advisor, and you're a pro advisor just simply by downloading the software, even if you haven't passed the certification, as long as you have a QBOA account, you're a pro advisor, a lot of the third-party apps will give you a free account to test it out, or they have free trials for a week or two, or you get a discounted subscription for yourself and for your clients. And so I love checking out the trials so that I can put something through its paces and make sure it's the right fit for the client. Now, going back to that needs assessment, once you have decided, what not decided, once you have determined what their needs are, it's time to decide what version of QuickBooks Online is the right one for them. And there's five columns on this slide here, but I actually, self-employed, the one on the far right, is in a class all by itself because self-employed um, does not upgrade into Simple Start through Advanced. Self-employed is standalone software that's only good for gig economy people, like hobbyists who are don't even have a business account. They have their funds commingled, they have one checking account, and sometimes the expense is business and sometimes it's personal. Or they don't have any AR, they're just getting paid like an Uber driver. Those clients are ideal for self-employed. But the moment that they have to write an invoice and send it to the client to get paid later, that's where you want to start with Simple Start. So Simple Start allows you to track your estimates and your invoices, and it has progress invoicing. You can categorize your income and expenses. You can synchronize your bank accounts. You can um, start using third-party apps. 
It works on PC, Mac, or your mobile device. You can accept merchant service payments. I haven't mentioned that all, that at all today so far, but QuickBooks Online has built-in merchant services. You can also process 1099s right in Simple Start. And Simple Start has one user account for the business owner and then two accounting firms. One that's going to be you as the pro advisor or bookkeeper, and then maybe a, a second one for a tax provider. Then the next level up is Essentials. It has everything that Simple Start has, but now it also offers you the ability to make delayed charges, which is kind of like an in a post-dated invoice. So you need to track that you did the work, but you're not ready to bill the client yet. So that would be a delayed charge. And if they are entering in bills to be paid later, later, and they now have AP, that's where Essentials comes in. Essentials also has an option for multi-currency so that you can have international currencies. It also has recurring transactions, and that's the equivalent of memorized transactions in desktop, and it also has time tracking. Plus, you get three users, not just one user, but three users. The Plus version has everything that Essentials has, but now it also gives budgets, purchase orders, inventory, class tracking, location tracking. You get five users, and you also can have unlimited report only users. So if you have uh, the company president or the CEO or the board and they wanna get in to run reports but you don't want them to touch the data, you can make reports only users for them. That does not count against your five. Then there's another version that just came out about six months ago called Advanced that has everything in, um, in plus, plus it has, um, Fathom for smart reporting, so you can get key point indicator and really amazing reports. You can do batch invoicing, and they just released batch expenses this, this week. You get custom user permissions, and you also get direct your own direct support rep through Priority Circle. And so if you are having a problem, you don't just call into regular support. You call your Priority Circle report, and they get it expedited. Plus, also with advanced, you get 25 users and three accounting firms. So all of those different features. With all four of those, you can go up and down as often as you need to. And so you can start somebody in Simple Start and as their company grows, take them to Essentials and then take them up to Plus. Or if you start them with Plus and they decide not to do inventory in QuickBooks, they decide to later go to a third party app, you can downgrade them to Essentials. So you can move freely between all of those. Uh, let me take a look at the questions that you've asked here. Um, Anatoly asks, can you do reporting from Simple Start? Yes, you can, but it only has reports for these basic things. For example, there's no accounts payable reports because there's no accounts payable. So there's only 20, 25 reports. You can absolutely customize them, but it doesn't have inventory reports because there's no inventory. And uh, somebody else asks, they have clients who use QuickBooks self-employed so they can track their mileage even though they may have simple or plus. Mileage tracking has now just been added to all of the subscriptions. So you can turn on mileage tracking inside Simple Start through Advanced. The only limitation is it only works for the master administrator, is the only person who can use the mileage tools. And somebody says, I have clients that use Desktop Pro, so Advanced would be the best option. That's actually not true. Um, advanced, if they're using Desktop Pro, it really depends on all the rest of what they need. Desktop Pro might be able to get away with Simple Start, although probably Essentials. So Desktop Pro and Essentials are about equivalent at the baseline, but then if they're using classes, you gotta go to Plus. So it really depends not which one is equal to desktop. It depends on what features you need to turn on and off. Okay, pricing per level. Uh, somebody asks that um, if you go to QuickBooks website, you can see the current pricing. You as a pro advisor can add clients to your wholesale billing. And so I'll show you how to do that in a few minutes. Uh, somebody asked, what is premium care with Priority Circle? Um, I had just mentioned that you actually get a dedicated support rep that when you have questions, you can call them with it and they will put you in the queue for support. So you have uh, one point of contact at Intuit for your support. Um, 
somebody asks about receipt capture. Receipt capture is now available in all of the versions. Okay, and uh, Karen asked, do the accounting firm user accounts have additional fees? No, it's just another seat in the, um, as it says, you get two accounting firms through all of them except advanced, which gets three. Okay, so let me go ahead forward a little bit more. Um, I had mentioned payroll and how payroll works. There is They've actually just changed how payroll is structured. Um, and so you may see the old payroll, you may see the new payroll. Um, but this is okay. So with standard payroll, that requires either you or the client to run the payroll, pay the taxes and file the returns. It's still push button. It's still just a couple clicks of the button, but they have to stay on calendar and remember to go in and do it. Otherwise people don't get paid and taxes don't get filed. With full service payroll, full service payroll will automatically pay the taxes and file the returns on behalf of the client as their reporting agent. All you have to do is just report the hours so that they can run payroll on time. If you are using QuickBooks Desktop and you're converting to QuickBooks Online, the payroll does not convert over. You, it's not transferable. You will need to sign up for a new payroll subscription and then put in all of your starting balances. Um, we do cover that in the advanced certification module. Okay, and then here's a little bit more about apps.com that apps allow you to supercharge your QuickBooks by adding additional functionality. And so that's going to be, um, we talk about it again in certification, or you can just go explore at apps.com. But the benefits of using the apps will reduce your data entry because a, most of them have seamless integration. Either they happen inside your QuickBooks Online or you do the work on their website, but it imports directly into QuickBooks for you. They add additional functionality beyond what's inside QuickBooks Online. Uh, but something else that's also nice is it does allow you to keep your sensitive data secure. Maybe you have employees who provide specific job functions, but you don't want them to log into QuickBooks and have access to anything else. You can put them in that third-party app. They'll do their work there, and their end result will get imported into QuickBooks. So it's good for, super, um, for um, separation of duties. So if you're doing manufacturing and inventory or they have industry specific software or they have billing approvals, those are all times when they can absolutely still use QuickBooks Online, but those features are not built into QuickBooks Online. But they'll do it in the app. It will import into their QuickBooks. Somebody did ask, does QuickBooks Online work for nonprofits? It absolutely does. You just set it up the same way you do in desktop. Okay, let's go ahead and take another poll. Let me know if you already are enrolled in an, either of the ProAdvisor programs. So there's one ProAdvisor program for desktop that's a paid program that gives you the software. And so that's how you get your QuickBooks desktop for accountants. There's the QuickBooks Online ProAdvisor program that's free and that allows you to manage all of your QuickBooks online clients in one portal. Then that's also where you get your training. It's also it has practice management tools. And one thing about it that's super cool is that when you sign up for the QuickBooks Online Pro Advisor program, you get a free copy of QuickBooks Online Plus and you can import your own file into it to learn how to use it. You also get a free payroll subscription for your own company as well. So those are benefits to the QuickBooks Online Pro Advisor program. Are you in both of them or are you in neither of them? So go ahead and answer this poll. Uh, if you're in neither of them, then you're definitely missing out. Uh, so if you, again, the desktop 
Pro Advisor program is paid, but you get free copies of all of the versions of QuickBooks Online. I'm sorry, QuickBooks Desktop Software. And if you're in the online version, you get your own free copy of QuickBooks Online Plus and Payroll plus discounts for your clients. Some of you will have both of them. I have both of them myself. So go ahead and answer that poll that you see on your screen. I'll give you a few more minutes. So if you hear my voice, do go check out the poll. It's waiting for you so that you can get your CPE credit. And I'm going to go ahead and answer some more questions in here. Um, who, where do you get more information about receipt capture, workflows, specific apps? So we, um, if you go to the firmofthefuture.com blog, you'll get some of that information there. If you do web searches, you can do it there. Um, I like to go also to insightfulaccountant.com is a great website for learning about what's happening in the industry. If you go to apps.com, you can find out about all the different apps. But if you keep taking all of our trainings, whether it's going to qbtraininevents.com and logging in and taking the free trainings there, or inside your QuickBooks Online for Accountants portal, on the left-hand side, it says Pro Advisor, and there's trainings in there as well. And those trainings help you get your certification. And if you take our certification trainings, um, those are all great ways of getting more information. You also, if you, your needs are not being met by any of those sources, come visit me at royalwise.com where I have some more in-depth um, in-depth trainings. I also have a, a blog called Look What I Found, where anytime I find a new feature, like when Risky Capture first came out, I put it through its paces and post a video about it. So those are all the, the different places that you can go to learn about it. Uh, somebody asked how you sign up for the QuickBooks Online Pro Advisor program. I'm going to show you that in a few minutes. Somebody says, does the subscription for QuickBooks Online need to be renewed and purchased each year? You actually pay for it every month automatically, and they just draft the money, and you can cancel at any time. Um, and Okay, I think that's pretty good. All right, now my poll uh, participation is a little bit low, so I want to make sure that everybody gets their CPE credit. So I want you to just go ahead and squeak in your answers. So if you can go ahead and get your answer in, I'm going to close the poll in five, four, three, come on, squeak your answer in, two, and one. And I'll even show you the answers on that one. So 8% of you are desktop only. 30% of you have a QuickBooks Online um, Pro Advisor membership, and again, it's free. 11% of you have both, and half of you don't have either one yet. So I definitely recommend that you follow the instructions that I'm about to give you and get signed up. All right, let's keep keep on. We have about an hour left. I'm sorry, half an hour left. Don't Didn't mean to scare you. Half an hour left. Uh, now what we're going to talk about is more about bringing your clients into QuickBooks Online for account, and I'm going to show you how to actually go in and add your clients. So we're going to talk about how to create a new QuickBooks Online company, how your client can add you as an accountant user, and how you can add clients to your portal. So the first thing that you actually need to do, I'm going to jump ahead to another slide because we can't add a client if you're not already in. So let me jump ahead and find that slide. And so you can sign up for your QuickBooks Online Pro Advisor program by going to quickbooks.intuit.com slash accountants. And you'll go ahead and sign in to sign up for it. And it's going to ask you for your username and password. Use your same username and password that you have for your desktop login and it will attach your QuickBooks Online to your already existing user profile with Intuit. So if you've never had a login with QuickBooks or Intuit ever, then you can go ahead and create a new account. But if you have had, whether it's recent or whether it's old, if you've ever had an account with Intuit, use your same username and password and then it will add your ProAdvisor portal to that identity that it already has for you. So go ahead and grab that link, and then I'm going to head back and pick up where I left off. 
Okay, once you sign in, this is what your portal looks like. So you will see a green bar across the top, which is cut off in this view, but the green bar across the top tells you that you're in your accountant's portal. So there are, and here you can see a list of all of your clients. Now there's a couple of easy ways to add your clients to your portal. So once you've found a business that you want to work with, you can integrate their QuickBooks Online file into your QuickBooks Online for Accountants. And I keep abbreviating that as QBOA. Okay. Um, I do want to let you know um, a couple of you are still waiting for answers to your questions in the Q&A, um, but we, um, we've got Kathy and Wendy on the line, but um, MB, who was with us, she her daughter just had a baby, so she had to run. So um, if you are waiting for your answer, please wait patiently, and we will try and get as many of your questions answered as we can. Okay, back to the topic at hand. Uh, let's see. So. The ways that you can get your clients on board is if they already have a QuickBooks Online file and they're already using it or they went ahead and registered for it, this is how they add you in. So they go up to the gear and then they go to Manage Users. And under Manage Users, there's two tabs. There's one tab for users and there's a second tab for accountants. And oh, let me go in and show you, right? Why not? So I'm in my, oh, I want to be in my client. So your QBOA portal has a green bar across the top. I'm going to click on this little circle right here, or I can pick the client name from the drop down and go into that client from there. And when they go up to the gear in the upper right hand corner and then down to manage users over here, then there's their number of users. They can have up to five users in plus three in essentials, one in simple start. But then, excuse me, there's another accounting firm tab right here. And this one has two accountants attached to it, uh, but normally it would say add accountant, and then you would put in the accountant's name and password um, and email, I'm sorry, not name and password, what am I talking about? Sorry, first name, last name, and email address. And then it will email you. So let's say they're signing you up, they would put in you would tell them what email address you want and then that will you'll get an email and in that email you'll click a link for accept the invitation and you'll go ahead and sign in and then your that client will appear on your client list you automatically have company administrator rights and you are ready to go and start accessing their file through your qboa portal which gives you all of the accountant toolbox tools that you're used to when you're working with your clients Okay, then if you want to add them to your wholesale program, this is one of the benefits that comes to you as a pro advisor, that you can add clients and to your account and they pay the wholesale rate or you pay the wholesale rate. Basically what it does is it adds them to your billing and you're billed at 50% of whatever the retail is for the subscription. So, you know, if the subscription price changes, your price is going to go up too. But let's say it's plus. Instead of the client paying $70 for plus, you pay $35 for it. And you can either, if you have a firm and you're doing value billing, you can build that price into your rates so that you're passing it on to your client. I myself tell my client that I'm giving them a 20% off discount. So I bill them for $56. I'm paying $35 and they're not paying $70. What makes that work is that you can take advantage of QuickBooks Online's tools and kind of get fancy with it. So check this out. Sign up for QuickBooks Payments. That's the merchant services. And then you can make an automatic sales receipt that automatically runs on the first of the month and charges the client for their either their monthly billing for you or just for their subscription. And so instead of you having to chase down your clients to get paid, you can just make it part of your onboarding that you do an authorization form and they pay you by credit card or they pay you by ACH. And then you set up a recurring sales receipt that just goes ahead and runs their charges and emails them a receipt every single month. 
So it's amazing the things that you can do to streamline. So that's why I wholesale my um, my client files, but everybody wins. They get a 20% discount. I make a little bit of margin, and that little bit of margin, if they have quick questions for me, I never hesitate to answer, and I because they've already paid me a little bit of money. So it works pretty well. So in any case, when you want to add them to your wholesale program, when you're in your accountant's portal, there's a green button in the upper right-hand corner that says add client, or you can go up to the plus sign and choose create and then create a new client. And then that will start the process. It will have you fill in their business name and their email address and then if you click on add more info it will ask for their address and their phone number and uh, all different information about that client then it gives you the opportunity hey you know what i'm just going to go live and do it inside the software so i'm going back to my accountant interface and i'm going to click add client up here on the upper right hand side and so I would fill in all this information. There's add more information right there. Then you pick which subscription you want them to have. So you've already done your needs analysis and you've already determined that they need plus or they need essentials or yes, they need advanced. And then you can see here the prices are at 50% of the current retail. And if you have three options across the top here. If you do wholesale discount, then they're going to get added to your billing and you're going to be charged this much for the subscription. And then it's up to you how you're going to get reimbursed for that. Is it just part of your service? Are you going to charge them? Are you going to charge them 35? Are you going to charge them 70 or like I do 56? You also have another option here. Maybe you don't want to do wholesale billing. You can do a direct discount where the client is billed at this rate here. So it's a little bit higher. It's still discounted, but it's only good for 12 months. And so for the first month, they'll pay 50. And then after that, they'll go to whatever the current retail is. And so that allows you still to be the hero and get them discounts, but then you don't have to take on the extra um, the extra steps yourself. And then I also want to point out that there's no subscription right now as a third option. QuickBooks Online for Accountants has practice management software, like how to manage your team and your task list and your deadlines. And so you can include your desktop clients with it by adding them in here and saying no subscription right now. And so there's no connection between this and their file, but you can incorporate them into the practice management tools if you wish to. So that's a cool little option right there. So in any case, you would then pick which one you want. It'll ask you if you want to add payroll and which version of payroll do you want enhanced or full service. And then that adds it all to your billing. You can also specify on a client by client uh, case which of your team members have access to their file. So if it's just you, this is not relevant. But if you have, if you're a CPA and you have a team of bookkeepers, you can specify which bookkeeper gets access to that file. So that's how to sign people up for the wholesale program. Okay, if you wanna read more about all these different options, here is a link that you can also go to quickbooks.intuit.com slash accountants slash resources slash discounts dash wholesale. And that's an article with uh, frequently asked questions and how to's in incorporating wholesale for your clients. And uh, somebody asked, are those fees monthly? Yes, they are monthly. Okay, so we already did this part right here. Now, once you have added the client to your portal, you see them on your list, and there's two ways of getting to the client. You can either click on the circle to go into their file, or you can click where it says go to clients QuickBooks and pick them off of the menu, and so that makes it super easy to switch between your clients. 
when you open up their file for the first time, it's going to walk you through a wizard where you specify um, what the business is called, how long they've been in business. It gives you an opportunity that if you are going to be importing your data from desktop, it gives you an opportunity and instructions on how to do that. It will also ask you what you would like to do in QuickBooks. And by checking off all of those little boxes, I'm looking at these over here, it will set up it'll turn on different features for you. So you don't have to do it from here. You can absolutely, you should absolutely still go into the account and settings and turn on and off different features and get them all set up. But it gives you an ability to streamline the process a little bit. And then after you click all set, it takes you in and um, you can get started with that client. Now let's go ahead and take another poll. Let me know, do you plan on getting certified? Are you already QuickBooks Online certified? You plan to become certified? You don't plan on becoming certified or you're not sure if you should get certified? I personally think that the certification is an excellent boot camp for getting to know QuickBooks Online. And so I highly recommend that everybody get certified and maybe even become advanced certified. Only 3% of pro advisors become advanced certified and it definitely has a lot of benefits. So go ahead and answer that poll. While you are answering that poll, I'm going to go take a look at your questions and uh, see what else you can um, see what else I can answer for you. Uh, Crystal asks, can you sign someone up for wholesale pricing if they already have a QuickBooks uh, account? If they already have a QuickBooks online account, unfortunately, there is no way to give them wholesale rates. You have to be the person that signs them up to get those rates. It used to be that you could, but they've done away with that backdoor. Uh, somebody asked, is it easy to drop a client? Well, I'm not sure exactly what you mean by that, but your client is always can always uh, delete your user access. And so, um, yeah, <laughs> I guess. Uh, somebody asks, can you input data from an existing QBO account of a client? Uh, to some extent, yes, you can export some of your lists, like your customers list, your chart of accounts list, and import them into a new QBO. Uh, something else you can also do is there's a third-party app called um, Chronobooks, and Chronobooks allows you to uh, export one QBO file and import it into a fresh shell. So you can use Chronobooks for that. Uh, somebody asks, can you override an earlier upload from desktop with a more current version if you continue to work in, in desktop after the old one? Okay, so if you prematurely uploaded and somebody kept using on, on desktop, you there is a, an option to purge a company, but it only works at, within 60 days of the original. Um, I would call support on this one. Um, you may wind up having to just cancel that subscription and start a new one, but you may be able to use Chronobooks to export or uh, if you're running 60 days, you can try the import again. Okay, somebody asked, do you need to pay sales tax if you have a wholesale billing client? I do believe so. Now, I'm not an authority because I live in Oregon and we don't have sales tax, but I do believe that sales tax is... Um, uh, that you are still responsible for your sales tax. And uh, Sarah asks, if a client already has QuickBooks Online, how do you switch them over? There is no direct way of doing it. You can, again, go in through a backdoor by using Chronobooks to back up their file and then create a brand new account under you and then import their file. It's a lot of work. Not sure if it's worth it, but it's definitely doable. Um, and then Jerry asks, in Essentials, does the client get a 1099 list at the end of the year? There are 1099 tools in um, the Essentials version. So yes to that. Okay, we have about 12 minutes left. I want to keep going. I'm going to go ahead and close your poll. It looks like the, um, the majority of you do plan to become certified. About 30% of you aren't sure. Only 16% say, no, you're not becoming uh, planning on becoming certified, and 8% of you are already certified. So that's a pretty good spread. I'm glad that the vast majority of you are interested in getting certified. So I'm going to go ahead and close that poll, and let's finish off our, um, 
our lessons here. So now I want to give you some really cool tricks for boosting your efficiency. This, for a lot of people, is the what they think is the deal breaker, why they don't want to go into QBO. But I want to show you that you do have it easy. There's a lot of different ways of navigating. So I'm going to show you um, about the QuickBooks Online app. I'm going to show you how some Chrome tricks, keyboard shortcuts, uh, cache and cookies, and some other Chrome best practices. So the first thing that I wanted to show you is that there is actually a native desktop app. Now don't get confused by the, the words QuickBooks Online and desktop in the same sentence here. Basically what it is, is an app for QuickBooks Online, but it's a computer program that you run on your Mac or your PC that has a frame for so it looks just like it did if you logged in through the chrome browser but it does give you drop down menus so if you are transitioning if you're used to working off of drop down menus this might be a good way for you to have the best of both worlds i personally don't use it i just log into chrome chrome is the recommended browser for it uh, but the um some people like it me, I don't get it. I find Chrome easy enough to use. Okay, now here's some of the cool things about working in multiple windows in a browser. And I'm just gonna go ahead and do this live in the product. So let me cancel out of that window. And I'm gonna go into beautiful landscapes again. When I'm using QuickBooks Online, a lot of the time I find it handy to work in more than one place at a time. For example, I might be in the banking feed. I would better one than this one. Let's try this one. See how easy it is to switch between clients. Okay. Banking feed, no banking feed. Oh, well. okay. So we got to play let's pretend. But let if I'm here in the banking feed and I see a transaction in the banking feed, but I know that I need to go, for instance, make that deposit. I don't have to leave this window, go do the thing and then navigate back here. You can make as many tabs as you want. And I can um, right click on a tab and say new tab to the right and make a new tab. And one of the things that I've also done is made bookmarks for myself right here so I can automatically go to the um, let's say the customers list and so you can um, have multiple tabs open you can also right click on a tab and tell it to duplicate and then you don't have to use the bookmarks you can just have that second tab open you can even say oh I need to go to my reports and so if I right click on that on that link I can open it up in a new tab and then the other option is you can also take a menu item and drag it up to the tabs area. Let's try that. Um, and so there's a whole different way of making tabs. And so the upshot of this is that you can have your bank feed open, you can have your customer list open, you can have this other one that you're working in. I very frequently will have uh, my search open. So that way I can navigate between different things and I can have as many tabs open as I want to all at the same time. You can also make use of your bookmarks. If you turn on your bookmarks bar and show your bookmarks, you can take any page that you're on and drag it down to your bookmarks bar and then create a link that will go straight to it. And as a uh, extra advanced hint, if you edit that link and you take off the C and the number and the period that come before it, so it just says qbo.intuit.com, this link will now work across all of your companies. And so if I have banking up here, it doesn't matter what company I'm in, it will work. It'll go to banking for every single one of the companies. So that's by using the bookmark bar. Your um, The slideshow also shows that you can just simply make a bookmark and have your own bookmark system. So that's uh, a, another way of doing it. Now, when I am in here also, um, up under the three dots in the upper right-hand corner, you may occasionally find that you want to uh, clear your browsing data. Sometimes QuickBooks Online gets stuck. Um, so you can clear your browsing data, which fixes it. Or 
especially a new incognito window. And this is what they'll have you do if you call support. If something does not seem to be working in your QuickBooks Online, open up incognito. Because what that does is it keeps no browsing history, no cookies, no forms. It doesn't remember anything that you do. And so it's a clean, pristine environment. And so then log into QuickBooks and try what you're doing in your other browser here. If it works, then you know the problem's actually with your browser. If it doesn't work, you know the problem's with your QuickBooks. And it's always worth trying this yourself before you call support, because this is the first thing that support is going to ask you to do. It's kind of like that old support joke about, well, did you try restarting your computer? It's essentially restarting your, your QBO. And... What else do I got for you? Another trick that you can do is in, this is only in Chrome, but there's another icon just to the left of the three dots. And these are for user accounts. And what you can do is you can actually open up multiple companies all at the same time by making different people, quote unquote people. And you can give them all their own little icon. But what this does is it gives you a whole different environment. So you can have your own Chrome bookmarks for your own personal under one person and then create your own ideal QuickBooks Online environment or maybe even create different environments for your different clients that have like all of their bank tabs all in one place. So you can create like Wild Style is one of my companies, I can put in Wild Style's QBO, the tabs that I use for them, and then their Bank of America tab and their Chase tab and their um, PayPal tab all in one place. So that way you can uh, have multiple quote unquote people open all at the same time. It puts them in a fresh window and you can see here that it has a different set of tabs. So uh, it's a great way of multitasking inside uh, QuickBooks Online. Okay, let's give you one more poll since we only have five minutes left. I didn't say this out loud, but you can guess the answer to it. How much extra does it cost for that desktop app? If you were to either download the app on your phone or to download the computer application that acts as a shell for QuickBooks Online, how much does it cost? Is it 99 cents? Is it 5.99? Is it 14.99? Or is it free? Now, I know I didn't say this out loud. I think you should guess and see how much you think it actually costs. So we're taking a guess at that one. Let me answer a couple more. Uh, a couple more. Uh, somebody asked, how did I get into an incognito window? And the way that I got into incognito was to click on the three dots in the upper right-hand corner of Chrome. It's only a Chrome feature. It's not in Edge or Safari or Firefox. And then you can pick an incognito window from there. One of the things that I frequently do, by the way, is I keep my QBOA portal, my management portal, open in an incognito window. And then I use a regular window for my client work. That way I have my to-do list and my portal at the same time I'm working in a client. Okay, whoops, come back. Okay, more questions. Desktop freezes, quit often. How can I do to eliminate the hang up? Um, I'm not actually sure what that meant. Um, if you're talking about the desktop app, that's one of the reasons I don't use it. I just log in through Chrome. If you meant something else, I don't know what that means. Um, and then Terry asked, what did she call it about recreating client that you bring over its Chrome? Um, uh, the people is what that feature was. And so there's a little circle up on the upper right hand side where you can make individual client interfaces for all of your different clients. Okay, now I've got three minutes left and a little bit more. Um, a little bit more to do. So go ahead and squeak your vote in on this poll. Five, four, three, two, and one. And yes, it this extra software is free. You do not have to pay more money to download the app. It's just a, a, an interface into your existing subscription. So a couple more things. If your complaint about QuickBooks Online is that it doesn't have keyboard shortcuts, well, you couldn't be more wrong. It does. Uh, you can open up a little pop-up window 
If you're on a PC, it's control alt question mark. If you're on a Mac, it's control option question mark. And that pops up a window that first of all, gives you your company ID. So if you're on with support and they say, well, what's your company ID number? That's where you get it. And then it also has a list of keyboard shortcuts. And so you can do that control alt um, I and it'll open up an invoice or control alt A and it will open up your chart of accounts. So if you're one of those people who you never take your fingers off the keyboard, this is going to help you out a ton. Okay, so let's do our last steps and where you are on your journey. I already showed you this slide, um, but if you have not already signed up for the free Pro Advisor program, I definitely recommend that you do. Even if you're not going to desktop yet, if you're still staying on, I'm sorry, if you're not going to online yet, if you're still on desktop, there's still Pro Advisor benefits that you're eligible for. So there's no reason not to sign up. Now, where we are here, we are just at step one on your pathway to certification. Today's training was just a, eagle eye view, uh, tip of the iceberg. I definitely recommend getting certified. When you become certified, you get a badge that you can use on your business cards and your website. You get a higher level of support and you also get a listing on the ProAdvisor, findaproadvisor.com website. That's findaproadvisor.com. And I get a lot of clients through that. If somebody Google searches for bookkeeper in Portland, Oregon, my name comes up because of this listing. So in order to get certified, what you want to do is go start your ProAdvisor portal. And I'm going to, uh, uh, yeah, I'll show you in a minute where to go to get the trainings, but take the trainings and then take the certification exam. Now, after you've passed the certification exam, there's also an advanced exam that only 3% of the ProAdvisors take and pass. It's not easy. In fact, it's designed to be hard because what could a test be that anybody can pass? When you pass the advanced exam, you also get elite support. You get a separate phone number to call for support. That's a direct line to their top tier. Uh, and you also rise up in the Find a Pro Advisor rankings. So it's definitely worth it. Here's where you go to get training and get certified. When you're in your QBOA portal, click on Pro Advisor on the left-hand side. There's two tabs there. One's for your benefits, and we talked about the benefits in the training on Monday, so download that handout so you can see those. Um, or, um, and then there's a second tab for training. And there's, this is also where you go to get your desktop certification as well. It's not just for QBO, desktop materials are here as well. And so you find what it is that you want and click on it and it has walkthrough tutorials, it has PDFs, it has videos, it has all kinds of training resources. And then that's also where you go to pass your test. And in the one that you see right now, you can see it says certified with a check mark and then download certificate. You can download your proof that you passed the test. The training itself, um, I'm going to go ahead and launch the last poll. I have just a couple more comments about certification, but I know that it is 12.01. So I'm going to launch one more poll and then I'll finish off about the certifications. Um, would you recommend this training for accountants? Go ahead and answer that for us so that you can finish your CPE credit. And then if you have to leave, you can. Otherwise, I'm just going to literally be about two more minutes while I finish off talking about the certification. So would you recommend this training who want to, to colleagues who want to learn more about QuickBooks Online for accountants? Now, while you are taking that poll, I'm going to go ahead and, and just keep going on the um, on the content. So the certification test, it takes about uh, about six and a half hours to do the whole training. That's if you went through all of the training modules and it's a good idea, but you don't even have to do the training. If you've been using QuickBooks Online already, you could just try and take the certification test the first pass and see how you do. We have uh, webinars monthly at qbtraininginvents.com. Um, we also have in-person trainings. Um, there's a full day program, uh, the Roadshow, that's traveling around the country, and maybe you'll see me there. I'm going to be in Washington, D.C. in December, in Portland, Oregon, and in Pasadena. And um, so come join us for certification training there. The test itself takes about two hours to complete. It's multiple choice, and you have to get a score of 80 or higher in order to pass that test. When you pass the test, 
um, you do get that uh, find a pro advisor port, uh, listing that I mentioned, and it'll put up badges for the things that you have, um, which tests you've passed. And um, this is a great place where you can advertise your services. And so, um, do, do, do. last up, where to go from here. So start a conversation with your clients. Who wants to switch to QuickBooks Online or who do you think would be a good fit for it? Pick somebody easy so that you don't have any challenges with it. Pick uh, you know, one of your businesses that doesn't take a lot of time and have them be your guinea pig so that you can get comfortable. If you haven't already signed up for QuickBooks Online Accountant, definitely do so so you can get your free QuickBooks Online, your books subscription and free payroll. Look at all your clients, set some dates. I want to do this client this week. I want to do this client next month. Decide when you're going to get certified. Hey, we've got um, holidays coming up. That might be a good time to uh, sit down and study. And by all means, grow your practice. So um, we'll also have Grow Your Practice workshops coming up with for new startups and existing firms. Um, and that's part of our roadshow that's coming up in um, starting this month. And so you can find out more about that at qbtraininginvents.com. Looks like everybody's voted, so I'm going to close the poll. So um, hopefully you enjoyed today's training. Um, it looks like most people recommend this training to other people, but if um, I can be of help to you in the future, you're welcome to find me. I'm gonna put my website in the chat. So it's royalwise.com. And I have my own trainings. They're all paid trainings. Some of them are free trainings. I have uh, my a mentorship program. And I'm anything that I can do to help you get comfortable in QuickBooks Online, and there's no such thing as a silly question. I am more than happy to uh, help you out. So thank you for spending your Wednesday with me today. And I'll look forward to seeing you in the next class. This is Alicia for Intuit at qbtraininginvents.com.